Happy Easter. Happy Easter. We celebrate today not just the fifth Sunday of Easter, which is within itself a reason to rejoice, but we do celebrate today the crowning of this image of Our Lady of Fatima. Yesterday, May 13th, was the 100th anniversary of three little children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco, who received mystical visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May 13th, 1917, the world changed, and the message of Fatima is as strong and as needed now as maybe ever. I like to look at the message of Fatima with three words. Please repeat after me. Prayer. Prayer. Penance. Penance. Peace. Peace. Prayer. Prayer. Penance. Penance. Peace. Peace. The message of Fatima in a very beautiful way is a message that we all need very, very much so. A hundred years after that first May 13th, 1917. I'd like to look at prayer, penance, and peace. I'd like to, in a certain sense, wrap them up with the symbol of a white handkerchief. When you go to different Marian shrines all throughout the world, each Marian shrine has its own kind of unique culture. For example, if you go to Lourdes, France, where the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to St. Bernadette, you will bathe in waters that gush forth from the spring there, and you will light a candle, and you will be in a candlelit procession in the night singing Ave Maria. If you go to Our Lady of Knock in Ireland, if you go to Guadalupe in Mexico City, every single Marian shrine has their own things. If you go to Fatima, you have to bring a white handkerchief with you. Why is that? Well, when they have processions with the statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Everyone stands and waves a white handkerchief at the Blessed Mother. You might ask the question, why? Well, I'd like to look at the white handkerchief in the message of Fatima. Prayer, penance, and peace. So let's first start with prayer. These three young children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francesco, were visited by Mary on six occasions on the 13th of each month, except when they had been arrested, and Mary appeared on the 19th of August. But for six times, Mary appeared to them. And almost every single time that Mary appears to them, Mary says, pray the rosary. Pray the rosary every day. The world needs to pray the rosary. Mary says again and again and again. Now, what does a white handkerchief do with praying the rosary? Well, let's start off with the fact that it's white. How does the rosary begin? With the story of the Annunciation, a young virgin who's spotless and has no sin whatsoever on her soul conceives a son. She, as we know, as we follow through the mysteries of the rosary, will wrap that son in waddling clothes, in swaddling clothes. That son will grow, and as we move, enter into the luminous mysteries, that son will be washed in the waters of the Jordan by John the Baptist. That son will go to a wedding feast where people wear white. That son will be transfigured on Mount Tabor where his clothes become dazzling white. That son will suffer, die, but then be buried in a linen cloth and laid in a tomb, where that very white cloth will have an imprint of his body left from the resurrection. That same son will rise from the grave, ascend to his father's right hand, and we believe because of that, that all those who believe in him are to dress in white on the day of their baptism, to dress in white on the day of their First Holy Communion, to dress in white on the day of their wedding, to dress in white on the day of their confirmation, because one day we pray that every single person who knows the Son will one day be dressed in white in the glories of heaven with the angels and the saints. The color of this handkerchief has everything to do with our Lord. Now what does that have to do with the rosary? Well. Here's my little thing with the rosary. 
Many of you know I studied in Rome for four years, and people are often like, oh my gosh, you got to live in Rome for four years, that's wonderful. If you've ever been to Rome, Rome is loud, smelly, dirty, polluted, and there's not air conditioning in the majority of the buildings. For four years, I lived in the city of Rome and sweat profusely. On an average day, I would go through three handkerchiefs, constantly wiping my face as I walked at Father Meyer pace from point A to point B. Being a little OCD, of course, I washed my handkerchiefs and ironed every single one of them. And as I ironed my handkerchiefs, I would pray the rosary. As I ironed each handkerchief five times. So for example, the five joyful mysteries, the Annunciation, the Visitation, the Nativity, the Presentation in the Temple, and the Finding of the Child Jesus. Mary asks us to pray the Rosary. Why does Mary ask us to pray the Rosary? I think some people look at this and are like, well, Mary's just full of herself. I mean, why does she want people to pray the Rosary? If, if, if that's people's thought and notion, then they have no idea what the Rosary is. What is the Rosary? The Rosary is a biblical meditation where we don't focus on Mary. We focus on her son's life. The mysteries of the Rosary are our, life, are our Lord's life in sacred scripture. And us constantly pouring these mysteries into our hearts, into our minds, and God willing, ultimately into our hands, into our feet. Today's Mother's Day. I will tell you, in knowing many women and working with many women, when a woman loses a son or a daughter, just as Mary did, they will cry out from the depths of their heart, remember my child, think of my child, talk about my child, don't forget my child. When Mary appears in Fatima and says to these three little children, pray the rosary, what is she saying? From the depths of her motherly heart, she's crying out, don't forget Jesus. Don't forget the miracles he worked. Don't forget his cross. Don't forget his resurrection. Talk about it. Think about it. And I want you to talk about it and think about it with me. Because I'm his mother and I love him. Mary comes to Fatima and begs the world to pray. To pray the rosary daily to think of her son. To daily meditate upon scripture. To daily allow the events of Christ's life to become a part of who we are. The first is prayer. The second is penance. Mary asked three young children, six, nine, and 11 years old, to do penance. She asked of them to fast. She asked of them to do corporal and bodily penances. And these children did. They would literally give their food away to other children who didn't have food. They wouldn't eat. They sometimes wouldn't drink. Why? In one of the visions, Mary opens the ground and the children see hell. And they see souls being tormented by demons. They see souls burning in extreme pain. And Mary says to the children, many souls go to hell because there is no one who is willing to pray or sacrifice for them. You must sacrifice yourself for the sake of sinners and offer up penances. And the children did. But that message was not just for those children. That message was for you and me. What does a handkerchief remind me of? Crying and sweating. Lucia will ultimately reflect upon seeing hell and seeing one soul go to hell as one of the most horrific experiences in her life. We should literally weep and cry knowing that there are people who go to hell and are cut off from Christ and his mercy and his love. And we should thus work and sweat for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and give our all so that everyone may know the Lord. 
Mary's a mother. Why does Mary ask the world to do penance to save souls? Because she says that her son is suffering. Now we know that God can't suffer. We know that Christ is in heaven. But we know that Jesus is the second person of the Most Holy Trinity and his body is united to ours because we're the body of Christ. And every soul that goes to hell causes Jesus tremendous suffering in his body because he is thus united to them. Every human being that suffers because of injustice, our Lord suffers in them. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers, you do unto me. And thus Mary sees her son suffering in the body of the church. And she begs that we do something about it. That we bring compassion and love and mercy. That we be willing to do penance and weep for sinners. Those who are most in need of God's mercy. Prayer, penance, and peace. Mary, as she visits these children, again and again asks for peace. She asks them to pray the rosary for the intention of peace. It's in the midst of World War I. It's 1917. She predicts World War II. And she predicts the corruption that Russia and ultimately the USSR will spread throughout the world and asks children who are 6, 9, and 11 and don't even know what Russia is, don't even know what communism is, and this woman who appears to them is telling them these things, and they believe her. And Lucia will ultimately tell the whole world to pray for peace and to pray for the conversion of Russia and to pray for an end of war. When I think of a white handkerchief waving in the air, what do I think of? Peace. What does a white handkerchief symbolize but surrender? I will tell you, my brothers and sisters, that there is only one way to peace in our world. There is only one way. And it is when you and I surrender our very lives to Christ. When we surrender our lives to Christ. What is at the heart of war? Hatred, pride, jealousy, racism, bigotry, culture divide. What's at, what's at the heart of war? People who hoard the world's goods and possessions for themselves and don't give them to others. There will only be peace. There will only be peace when the world surrenders its pride and its hatred to Christ. When we surrender to the power of Christ to live as he calls us to live, which is only by one way, which is by us living the gospel message and choosing to serve and to break down the hatred that exists in our world. My dear brothers and sisters, Our Lady of Fatima calls for peace, and she does so by asking us to surrender. I don't know a mother who wants hatred and division in her house. I don't know a mother whose heart is not broken by division in their family, particularly among their children. And Mary is our mother, and Mary's heart aches as she sees the children of the world in war and division. Why do we need Fatima? Because our world is at war. Why do we need Fatima? Because we need prayer, penance, and dear Lord, do we need peace. Now you might stand there and listen to me and say, oh Father, this is a bunch of Catholic magic. Fatima is a hundred years ago, three ridiculous children who lied to the world? How many children do you know at the age of six, nine, and 11 have the ability to move 70,000 people on one single day? Francesco, Jacinta, and Lucia were visited by Mary for six months. On October 13th, the last month that Mary appeared, on that very day, 70,000 people gathered in Fatima. 70,000. It had begun raining the night before and had not stopped 
70,000 people stood in ankle deep mud for hours. Their clothes were saturated and drenched. 70,000 people, many of them atheists, Jews, and skeptics, and enemies of the church, there just to see a spectacle. As the three children were escorted by security and by family to keep them safe from being torn apart by the crowds, they brought them to the place where the Blessed Virgin Mary appears. And these three children knelt down as they always had in this field. And every eye, 70,000, stared at them and waited for a miracle, waited for a sign, because the, set, because the three children said that Mary was going to work a miracle in October. And as these three children knelt down, the crowd actually began to riot because nothing happened. It just kept raining and raining. The sky was as black as night with clouds. And then the oldest of them, Lucia, she pointed to heaven in the midst of darkness and said, look, the sun and the crowd literally pressed upon her to tear her to pieces, convinced at this point that she's a lunatic. And at that very moment, 70,000 people, Jews and atheists and skeptics and the faithful, see the sky rip apart and see the sun burning brightly. That sun then begins to spin in circles. That sun begins to literally move up and down across the sky. The people down below are panicking. They're running. Some of them are falling to their knees asking for forgiveness of their sins because the, all of them are convinced that the world is going to end at that very moment. The sun then plummets towards the earth. And as the crowd is all on their knees begging for mercy, the sun returns to its place. And instantaneously at that moment, every ounce of water disappears. Their clothes are as dry as they can be and are spotlessly clean after standing for hours in the mud. At that moment, people who are blind are healed, people who can lame are able to walk, and Jews and atheists convert by the thousands. If you don't want to believe, If you don't want to believe, then what do you believe in? Our Lord desires in our world peace, and it will only come through Christ and through prayer and through penance. I ask of you today with me to pray that the message of Fatima not be forgotten, that we with our very lives will surrender everything to Jesus Christ. I don't know where you're at with praying the rosary. You might have never prayed a rosary in your life. I invite you to pray a rosary. You may pray the rosary every now and then. Pray it once a week. If you pray it once a week, pray it every day. If you pray it every day, pray with greater fervor and devotion, meditating upon the life of Christ. I don't know if you've ever done an act of sacrifice for our Lord ever. If you haven't, I beg of you to. Sacrifice yourself for sinners. Offer your life as a living sacrifice. And I don't know if there's peace in your life at all. But I can guarantee you this. That when you live for Christ, there's peace. When you know the Lord, there's peace. Let's pray today for the intercession of Saint Jacinta and Saint Francesco, newly canonized by Pope Francis just yesterday, that there may be a deeper understanding of prayer, penance, and there may be a deeper reality of peace in our world through the message of Fatima. Through God's grace, may it be so, and through God's grace, may we all one day reach the glories of heaven with Jacinta and Francesco. Amen.